Hello viewers and welcome to the GWR941 channel and it just so happens that today we are taking a look at a Hornby locomotive that is a pug and it just so happens that it's the first unboxing locomotive video of 2013 so we're going to kick things off with the pug and it says top link on the box because it definitely is a top link locomotive very good model I've had it out a few times, uh, test running it and and whatnot. Um, it was bought for me for Christmas, as you may have seen. I told everyone on the uh, layout update video a few weeks ago. And yeah, it's a brilliant engine. Very small, but it's perfect for shunting things about. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. I can't see anything at the moment because that big construction leaflet in the way, but. Yeah, the first people to build the Pugs, well, they nicknamed Pugs, well, they, the Allen Y Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway first built these locomotives. I think the first one was built in 1886, um, and they classified them as Class 21s, but they were nicknamed Pugs because of how small they are, and apparently they sounded nice, or I don't know, something like that. Um, so they were nicknamed Pugs. Uh, here's your instruction sheet for the operation and maintenance manual of the Pug. Pug locomotive 040. What I do find funny, well, nice, funny, whatever you want to call it, is the motor's entirely in the cab. There's not not really any other place you could put it in a Pug, I suppose, but motor's in the cab, which is unusual. I suppose it's easy to get at, but yeah, motor's in the cab. Let's have a look. Got some accessories in here somewhere. There we go. And we've got quite a few accessories. We've got some little lamps, a driver, which is unusual. It's different to all the other drivers you get normally in the accessory packs by Hornby. It's different. And then you've got lamps, and you know, they used to, used to hang them on the back of the engines to tell you which engine it is, which train. Whether it's freight, express passenger. <laughs> I might do that in the video to put an express passenger code on this pug. That would be quite funny. <laughs> anyway. Right. Uh, hold on the back. Obviously, the Allen Way was folded up when they did the groupings. And the LMS took over. And they classified the engines as class OF. Because obviously you have your 9, well, 9 SBR, but obviously. But you've got your 8 F, so this was OF. It just tells you how small and not very powerful it was. Um, so, yeah. Here she is. Right, I've switched the light on because it's terrible light coming into the room. It's dark, horrible, raining, miserable outside. So, anyway, let's carry on with the poke video so yeah she may be a she may be a small engine but she definitely packs a punch in terms of detail I mean look at all the rivets on the saddle tank and the handrail um, she's in the uh, British Railways livery with the early uh, emblem on the side which I'd like yeah she's <laughs> very very small very small you can see why they they were very much liked in dockyards and things. Um, it's it, they were built for use in sharply curved sidings and for shunting in dockyards um, by the Island Y or in industrial areas docks. They they after sort of. British Railways took over from the LMS. They sort of worked in a lot more open areas. I mean, they worked in docks in Fleetwood, Liverpool, uh, and, and as it says in later times, York, Swansea. So they did spread out after the LMS folded up. But as for the model, We've got loads of lamp hooks on the back to put those ones from the accessory pack in. 
on, whatever you want to call it. I like the big wooden buffers. Obviously, they're not sprung. <laughs> the number, 51222. Two, two. I think there's a video on YouTube of one of the preserved, preserved pugs in 2003 had been ring numbered and was working at a dockyard somewhere and was painted into this livery with that number. That's quite a nice video to watch, actually, if you search it up on YouTube. I'm afraid if you like your cab detail, you've got a big slab of motor instead of anything else in there, but she's so smooth, small and so cute, you can't really have anything else. As I said, there's nowhere else to put the motor, it has to be in the cab. And if you do decide to buy a pug, you have to keep these wheels clean. Um, I've only, I haven't run it that much, but they're in desperate need of a clean, so I will clean the wheels before I do the running part of this video. Otherwise, I won't be really showing her true potential. So, a very nice looking locomotive. Very nice. And I don't know how much she cost. I can't tell you because she was a gift from Alex, a good friend of mine. Runs the Island the RB1 channel. I suggest you go and have a look. He's meant to be putting some new videos up soon. So, yeah. Let's go and have a look around the track. Okay, and um, I expect you all already know about these, but the Pico tra uh, wheel cleaners. Brilliant little tool. If you haven't got one, I recommend you get one. Uh, one side plugs on to one side of the track, the other side plugs on to the other side of the track. Uh, normally, via a normal track clip. But this is broken, so I'm just blue tacking them onto each side of the rail, which works just as well. So I'm just going to quickly clean it off. Make sure you've got enough power turned up on the controller, or is it won't work very well. It's always important not to press down too much. Okay, let's get Puggy Uggy on the track. Puggy Uggy, I like that. By the way, there are two pugs preserved by the Lancashire and Yorkshire Locomotive, uh, whatever it is, preservation group up north somewhere, which is good. I don't think there's any in steam now. They are getting on a bit. Right, let's see how she goes then. Give her a little bit of juice. Ooh, wrong controller. That's normally helps, you know. Considering how small she is and her wheels and, and like that sort of stuff, it's brilliant that Hornby have been able to produce a loco that runs at such a realistic speed. But, oh, I mean, you would expect this thing to be pausing and stopping all the time, but she's not. She's not. She runs at speed over points as well. I mean, okay, you have to have very clean track and you've got to be cleaning the wheels very regularly. And she does struggle a little bit, but she does it. It's no different with the crossover too. Struggles a bit, but as long as you've got clean, clean track and clean wheels, she will do it. So, do I re recommend the little pug we've got here? Mm, of course I do, she's brilliant. I recommend anyone go out and buy a pug. It's absolutely epic fun. Yes, okay, they require a certain amount of maintenance to make them run, but they're brilliant. Um, yeah, go out and buy one. If you see one at a reasonable, pri reasonable price, go and get one. I will say that if you go on the Hornby website, they are a little expensive, but the amount of engineering, well, model engineering, whatever you want to call it, goes into one of these... Because they're so complex, they're so small. The way the motor's made to fit into the cab, it must have took a lot of work to have done. <laughs> I think it's, this is the smallest model you can get on the UK market <laughs> for a double O gauge. It's brilliant. It really is. So that's all, I, all I've got to say, really. That just about sums it up. 10 out of 10. Brilliant. I will see you in the next video. I'm not sure what it was going to be. Um... So yeah, like, subscribe, favourite, I'll see you.